Dear God, thank you for this beautiful group that has gathered to study your word. Help us to be real with each other and with you today. Give us courage to be honest and to talk with those we trust. We want to experience the hope, freedom, and peace that comes from confession to you and to others. In Jesus' name, Amen. When it comes to the topic of sex for pleasure, it's a subject that often raises eyebrows and can even be considered taboo in some circles. But let's put on our open-minded hats and dive into what the Bible has to say about this. It might surprise you. Unsurprisingly, there's no explicit verse in the Bible stating, sex for pleasure is okay. Yet, interpretation is key here. Many believe that passages such as Proverbs chapter 5 verses 18 to 19 implicitly endorse sexual pleasure within marriage. These verses describe marital love and passion in quite enthusiastic terms. However, it should be noted that not all interpretations agree, with some suggesting these verses may refer more broadly to relational joy rather than specifically sexual enjoyment. Therein lies one of the challenges when interpreting ancient texts, they're often steeped in metaphor and symbolism which can lead to varied understandings. Remember though, while we'll delve into various viewpoints here, ultimately what matters most is how each individual interprets these passages for themselves. So buckle up folks, we're about to embark on an intriguing exploration of biblical perspectives on sex for pleasure. Table of Contents 1. Understanding Biblical Views on Sexuality. 2. What the Old Testament Says About Sex for Pleasure 3. New Testament Perspectives on Sexual Pleasure 4. The Bible's Take on Marriage and Sexual Satisfaction 5. Conclusion. Balancing Pleasure and Purpose in Biblical Sexuality. Diving headfirst into the topic, it's clear the Bible has a lot to say about sexuality. At its core, sex is seen as a gift from God, designed for procreation and the expression of love between a husband and wife. The first book of Genesis sets the tone. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. This passage often forms the basis for Christian beliefs about sex, it's intended for married couples who have left their parents to form their own family unit. Yet, it doesn't stop there. The Song of Solomon expands further on sexual desire within marriage. It's an entire book dedicated to celebrating marital love, including physical attraction. The couple in this poetic book expresses longing for each other's bodies, kisses, embraces, essentially highlighting that sex isn't just about making babies, it's also about pleasure. It is however important to note that while the Bible appreciates sexual pleasure within marriage boundaries, anything outside these bounds, like adultery or premarital sex, as clearly discouraged in verses like Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. But let's not forget Paul's words in Corinthians 2. He urged couples not to abstain from sex but rather use it as a way to protect against temptation, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5. So yes, from Paul's perspective in particular, mutual pleasure was part of God's design for sex. To sum up this section. 1. Sexual relations are seen as gifts meant primarily for married couples. 2. Pleasure is an integral part of these relations according to Song of Solomon. 3. However, activities such as adultery or premarital intimacy go against biblical teachings. 4. Mutual pleasure helps guard against temptation per Paul's guidance in Corinthians. Remember, these interpretations may vary among different Christian traditions, but they serve as a general overview of what the Bible says about sex for pleasure. Diving right into the Old Testament, it's clear that sex is seen as a deeply significant act. It's not just about procreation but also about unity and intimacy between partners. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 lays this out pretty clearly when it states, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The concept of one flesh goes beyond just physical union. It implies emotional bonding, mutual pleasure, and shared joy. Let's take a glance at Song of Solomon, which paints an entire picture dedicated to sexual love in marriage. With verses like, How beautiful you are my darling. Oh, how beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are doves, Song of Solomon chapter 4 verse 1. 
it becomes evident that the Bible does indeed acknowledge the role of passion and pleasure within marital bounds. However, there's also a flip side to consider. The Old Testament doesn't shy away from laying down some ground rules concerning sexual behavior. For instance, Leviticus chapter 18 provides explicit prohibitions against various forms of illicit sexual conduct such as adultery or incest. But what does all this imply? Well, 1. The Old Testament views sex positively within the context of marriage. 2. It emphasizes mutual respect and consent between partners. 3. Pleasure isn't ignored but rather celebrated responsibly within specific boundaries. Yes, folks, the Bible doesn't view sex as merely utilitarian or functional. Instead, it champions a balanced perspective where procreation exists harmoniously with pleasure under the umbrella of love-filled commitment in marriage. Diving into the realm of the New Testament, there's a whole new perspective to unravel regarding sexual pleasure. The Apostle Paul, known for his writings on many subjects in the New Testament, has shared some valuable insights. He encourages married couples not to deprive each other of sexual relations unless they agree to abstain for a limited time for fasting and prayer. You could say he was emphasizing that sex isn't just about procreation, it's also meant to be a source of pleasure and intimacy between two committed individuals. Now, let's take a moment to look at Song of Solomon. Even though it's part of the Old Testament, its lyrical exploration of romantic love is often mentioned in discussions about biblical views on sex. The book celebrates physical attraction and mutual desire. It showcases an ideal where both partners are eager participants who find joy in each other's bodies. Many might argue that these passages highlight that within marriage, sexual pleasure is seen as something good and beneficial, not sinful or purely functional. However, you'll notice this all hinges heavily on context, mainly within marriage. Premarital sex isn't explicitly addressed simply because it didn't fit with cultural norms at the time these texts were written. But general principles around sexual purity and faithfulness are made clear throughout the Bible. Lastly, worth noting is Jesus' teachings on lust. While he doesn't comment directly on sex for pleasure within marriage in recorded scriptures, he does warn against allowing one's desires control over their actions, an important reminder for any discussion about sexuality. Let's dive right in. It's clear that the Bible places a high emphasis on marriage. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, for instance, underscores the importance of marital union, saying, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. But what does it say about sexual satisfaction within this sacred bond? While you won't find explicit references to sex for pleasure in its pages, there are certain verses that suggest God designed the act not just for procreation, but also as a source of joy and intimacy between spouses. Proverbs chapter 5 verses 18 to 19 is one such example where Solomon encourages men to rejoice with their wives and be captivated by their love. Similarly, Song of Solomon is filled with sensual imagery that celebrates physical love within marriage. Its poetic language paints a picture of mutual desire between two lovers, suggesting that sex isn't merely functional but an expression of deep affection. Yet it doesn't stop there. The New Testament continues this theme with Paul advising couples in Corinthians 7-3-5 not to deprive each other sexually except for agreed periods of fasting and prayer. This reinforces the idea that sexual fulfillment plays an integral role in maintaining marital harmony. However, keep in mind these interpretations could vary across different Christian denominations due to cultural differences or personal beliefs about sexuality within marriage. It's always best to seek counsel from trusted spiritual leaders if you have questions or concerns regarding this topic. Remember though, while the Bible seems supportive of sexual pleasure within marriage boundaries, it equally emphasizes love, respect and commitment as foundational aspects which shouldn't be overlooked. Some might wonder, does the Bible frown upon sex for pleasure? Well, it's not quite as black and white. The good book places a heavy emphasis on the sanctity of marriage, but that doesn't mean it entirely negates the idea of sexual pleasure within that bond. When considering what the Bible says about sex for pleasure, one shouldn't ignore its teachings on love and respect among couples. It emphasizes the importance of mutual consent, highlighting that both parties should find joy in their intimate moments. Indeed, Song of Solomon is filled with verses celebrating erotic love between spouses. 
The Bible also highlights how marital relations serve two purposes, procreation and bonding. So while procreation is often highlighted as the primary purpose of sex, there's an undeniable focus on strengthening marital bonds through physical intimacy too. One might argue then that these bonds are fortified by pleasurable experiences shared between couples. Therefore, from this perspective, deriving pleasure from sex isn't frowned upon biblically, provided it happens within a loving and committed marriage. However let's not forget moderation. As with everything else in life, balance is vital according to biblical teachings. While enjoying sexual relations can play a part in maintaining healthy marital relationships. 1. Overindulgence could lead to lustful behavior. 2. Lack of restraint may cause detrimental effects. It's crucial to keep these potential pitfalls in mind while seeking pleasure within matrimonial confines. In summary, if you're wondering if the Bible allows room for sexual enjoyment within marriage, yes. But remember to balance your desires with respect for your partner and adherence to moral principles outlined in scripture. Heavenly Father, grant us the courage to be brave and courageous as Jesus was when we walked this earth, yet kind and compassionate at the same time. Make the impossible possible in our lives as we seek your will in our lives over our own vindication and defense mechanisms. Help us to remember this powerful truth, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. James chapter 5 verse 13. Deliver us, Father, from the everyday attacks on our conscious, health, relationships, and beyond. From what can see coming and would never expect, protect and deliver us from anything that threatens to throw us off your course for our lives. Give us strength to love people that are seemingly unlovable without compromising our character as Christians. Build a confidence in us that is unstoppable and immovable but guard our hearts from pride. Deliver us from our distorted thoughts, sickness, debt, sadness, struggles, hunger, pain, fear, oppression, conflict, and unbelief, for we proclaim your peace over our lives through prayer, today. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 help us to put on your armor, daily, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen.